Hey guys, I chose to do my research project for the Turtle Island assignment on a place in Red Wing, Minnesota called the Bryan Village. A few weeks prior to getting the Turtle Island project assignment, I had heard one of my professors, Dr. Ron Schirmer, describe this particular site to us in one of his lectures and I wanted to learn more about it. This specific site was actually found by accident by the owner of the property. The property owner was digging for gravel as he did have a, pro a gravel business on his property when all of a sudden dozens of bodies worth of bones came tumbling out of the earth. Not knowing what was going on, the farmer decided to call in some professionals. After years of excavating and exploring the area, still only a very small percentage of the actual site was studied. By the time Dr. Shermer and his colleagues had packed up their work for the upcoming winter season, no more than roughly 10% of the entire location had been excavated, which is not very long at all because this site was very, very vast. Unfortunately, nothing more was ever just studied at the Bryan Village because that spring, before the team of archaeologists could return, the owner of the property, the grandson of the original owner, had taken a bulldozer to it and had destroyed all the recoverable hard evidence. The Wakadaja, or the Thunderburn clan, occupied this area at its peak. Although these peoples did not occupy this area the entire time, they left very much rich history to go along with everything that was also found at the site. As explained in this slide, this is what artists imagine the site would have looked like at the height of its occupation, according to the information attained by archaeologists during their digs and excavations at the site. To indigenous peoples around the world, origin stories are a very significant part of their heritage and their culture. The origin story for the Wakadaja tribe, or Thunderbird clan, goes as follows. In the beginning, Earth Maker created the world and human beings, but these were so weak that they were powerless to repel the attacks of the evil spirits and the man-eaters or giants. These were invariably victorious over the people until Earth Maker sent Hare to deliver the latter from their enemies. After many hardships, Hare succeeded in ridding the world of all the evil spirits that had molested it for so long a time, and in conjunction with the trickster, established the Medicine Lodge. Upon reading the Wakadaja origin story, I could relate it to that of the book of Isaiah in the Holy Bible, in which it is detailed that the Savior Jesus Christ came down from heaven to save God's people from worldly hardships, sin, and temptation. There are also a few stories related to this area from the nearby tribes that have a similar origin story to the Wakadija tribe. One of these tribes is better known today as the Odo. The Odo have a story about young brothers going out to seek and find land to live. It is called Big God Bear Origin Story. To understand this story, Four brothers, each representing different natural elements, such as water and sunlight, for example, struggle to find a land to settle on and successfully live. Each of the brothers goes out trying to find land, but only the last brother has success. When they finally do find land, they realize that they have forgotten their arrows to hunt with, and the story describes how they must make some from what they have to find on their new land. While they are looking for supplies, they stumble upon a track, a track made by a human being leading to a fireplace. Because of this, the brothers decide that this would be a good spot for them to inhabit. As time went on, the brothers came to the conclusion that they did not always have to stick together, that they could go off and do their own things. While a brother decided to stay on the land they had currently been living on, the others decided to disperse themselves around the area. So one of the brothers, a shapeshifter, became an eagle and flew to the top of a cedar tree in the uplands. This is where they decided to make their new land and make it their new home. This story is not necessarily directly connected to the Wakadija, but rather the Odo people who also lived in the area. The Bryan site still holds significance to many of the living relatives of the Wakadija, as many of their ancestors lived died, and were buried there. 
Because so many of the relatives were buried in mounds throughout the site, indigenous people hold this area in very high regard and honor. This is also for the same reason, caused great controversy among the people excavating the site and the relatives of the deceased Wakataja people. To many, if not all indigenous peoples, the burial of an ancestor is a very spiritual and sacred act, not to be disturbed by or for unnatural causes. <clears throat> Scientists, however, want to dig into the burial mounds and study the remains of the people buried there. The scientists believe that by uncovering these graves and unearthing the bodies, they could get a better understanding of the people who had once occupied the area, even though it was quite controversial. In the end, the scientists did get their way and did uncover the remains. However, once the scientists had completed the studies of these particular human remains, they were rightfully placed back in the burial mounds with their fellow ancestors. Unlike many of the burial remains and um, bones that were taken from other burial sites that are now placed in museums and up until recently had just been returned. The relatives of the people that were buried in this location were not particularly pleased with the actions that had been taken, but it was what had seemed to be the only compromise between the two very different Wakadaja people and the scientists involved. Ironically, when looking for information on the indigenous people's site, I found that non-indigenous people produced most of the published works on these sites. Because of this alone, the amount of attainable information on these sites could be quite biased if you do not first investigate the source in which you are receiving the information from. I had the opportunity of working with Dr. Shermer, an anthropology teacher at the Minnesota State University, Mankato, who has also worked and published works on the Bryan site. Having the opportunity to discuss this topic with someone who has had firsthand archaeological knowledge is extremely beneficial when it comes to writing about sacred areas within indigenous people's communities. He helped find and gave me many trustworthy and credible sources of information. Although he is not a Native American himself, he's considered an ally within the Native American community. The articles Dr. Shermer provided me with and told stories to me seem to represent an accurate portrayal of the Bryan site and the people who had once lived there, but only from an archaeological viewpoint rather than the more ethnographic viewpoint that is usually needed when dealing with people and their deceased relatives. Because this site is not currently being excavated or even slightly intact, there is not more of any community developments happening at this site in particular. But people like Dr. Shermer still continue to work with indigenous peoples in the Red Wing area, not just for research, but also developing relationships with the native community itself. By gathering information from other nearby sites, we can get a pretty good understanding of what life was like at the Bryan village during the peak of its occupation that would have otherwise been unknown or undiscovered due to the fact that the Bryan village had been destroyed many years prior. Thanks for watching my presentation, and I'm looking forward to the questions and comments you guys will leave me. I'll try to provide the best feedback I can. Thanks for watching.